Okay, so one more video for tonight. I just came across this interesting article from Arasha Fak, uh, Arabic news agency, which I've never heard of, but I did translate this page, so the translation is a little uh, a little sketchy, um, so bear with me. It says, MP, which is a member of parliament in Iraq, uh, Saudi Arabia and its allies are trying to enter Iraq and are able to deal with them. goes on to state that Saudi Arabia, along with allied countries, are trying to breach the Iraqi border after the military exercises conducted near the country's borders said that the violation of Iraq's sovereignty and its borders penetrate the red line and we will not allow it never, calling for the importance of adopting a unified national position and rejected the Saudi interve intervention in Iraqi affairs. The violation of sovereignty touches all Iraqis because Iraq is a country everyone and we all have the duty to defend the borders and the security and sovereignty of the country. Um, so I'm not sure what exactly all this means or what's going on here. There's another another one here that's coming from a news agency called Beyond the Levant goes on to say the exact same thing. An Iraqi member of parliament states Saudi Arabia and its allies are trying to enter Iraqi territory. So this doesn't mean that, you know, Saudi is invading Iraq. This means that if the Northern Thunder exercises that kicked off yesterday um, might be concluded, they're supposed to go through March 10th, but if Iraq is saying that Saudi Arabia is, and the allies are trying to enter Iraqi territory, that means that they've already mobilized all their forces, the 350,000 troops and 20,000 tanks and what have you, and are going and getting ready to uh, to invade Syria. So that would happen one of two ways. Um, so here we've got down here is where the King Khalid military base is coming up through Iraq would be Saudi Arabia and all its allied forces. And they would do one of two things. They would go north through Iraq, through Mosul, into Turkey, and then they would team up with the Turkish forces, and then all of those forces together would invade Syria from the north. Um, the other alternative would be for Saudi Arabia and, and all their allied forces to come west through Iraq and invade Syria from the west, uh, which would basically give them a clear line to Damascus so they could go out and, and take Assad uh, directly uh, themselves and then let Turkey invade from the north let Turkey deal with the fighting that's already gone on, going on up there between the Russian forces, the Syrian government troops, the Kurds, and ISIS, and blah, blah, blah. So they've already got skirmishes going up, up there. So Turkey can invade from the north. Saudi and Pakistan and Egypt and all those other guys with all their thousands of tanks and what have you would come west through Iraq into Syria and hit Damascus. And um, that's uh, that's pretty much what... From the economic collapse news blog that Michael Snyder puts out, he kind of went on to say, if this happens, we should expect the Saudi coalition storm through western Iraq and into Syria from the south, and it is likely that Turkey will come from the north. So he goes on to stay that, uh, state that. And then I found another article here from the National Interest stating that Saudi Arabia's master plan against ISIS, Assad, and Iran in Syria. And it's written by this guy named Nawaf Abide, who was... Uh, he used to be a former advisor to one of the Saudi princes, and he goes on to say that, um, talks about the, you know, Northern, Northern Thunder here for a little bit, and then what he says at the bottom here, um, he says, finally, the Saudis and Turks recently set up a coordination committee for military affairs to plan future large-scale operations into Syria via the Turkish border, and then he goes on to talk about how the F-15s from Saudi Arabia will soon arrive, but they're already there, so... So this guy's, um, you know, Saudi Arabian uh, insider and what have you, and he's saying that Turkey and Saudi Arabia have already coordinated to team up together and invade Syria via the Turkish border. Um, and then, you know, Michael Snyder and other people are speculating that that would happen through the West. So it could go either way right now. But nonetheless, um, these are, sorry about that, uh, nonetheless, these articles are definitely interesting. They're unconfirmed, like I said, but I'm going to keep my eye on them, and we'll see what happens. But if uh, if they're on the move, then uh, things are in motion, and we need to keep uh, an eye out for what comes next. So, um, you know, as we know, this is CNN. I mean, the foreign minister of Saudi Arabia is, is coming outright saying that, that they want to take out Assad. Uh, Northern Thunder, they say, is to, is to defeat ISIS and what have you, but then these contradicting himself saying that you know they're going to take out Assad by force no matter what so this has nothing to do with ISIS Saudi Arabia controls ISIS so does 
uh, or not controls them, but they, you know, they're they're helping them out along with Turkey, and you know, ISIS controls Mosul in Iraq. So if they come north this way, they could easily team up with ISIS and bring them along for the ride to invade Syria. So, or they could just leave them there to to defend Iraq and and what have you. But um, what else have I got here? Uh, the in Kirlik Air Base, which is in Turkey, uh, at Adana, which is right here. So that's where the F F-15 Saudi fighter jets are, along with the uh, Turkish Air Force and possibly some U.S. forces there. Uh, and Wikipedia states that um, it's one of the six NATO sites in Europe which hold tactical nuclear weapons. So uh, they've got tactical nukes in, in this air, air base right here in Adana that they could easily use um, on Syria and on Russia and whoever else they needed to. The only problem with that is, um, I mean, we know if this goes hot, there, there are going to be tactical nukes no matter what if this goes hot. Russia, you know, Russia's already stated they would, they would use their, their, their tactical nukes and are obliged to defend Syria in any way, shape, or form. So, um, and then this, ship go, this article goes on to say from Press TV that Russia sends new cruise missile ship uh, Zelani Dahl to Syria which is a, uh, you know, a nuclear, they've got nukes, nuclear missiles, uh, tactical nuclear missiles uh, on that ship. And they're in the Mediterranean right now. So they could launch nuclear missiles, tactical nukes from the Med. Um, you know, they'd be, they'd be stationed outside of Syria on one of Syria's ports, and then they could easily launch their tactical nukes into Turkey, while Turkey and Saudi Arabia launch their tactical nukes into Syria. Um, and then boom goes the dynamite. So, yeah, so that's what I have there. Um, that's pretty much what's going on right now. Uh, this article came out from RT. Fears radioactive material stolen in Iraq could be used for a dirty bomb. There was, uh, you know, uh, radioactive material was stolen like a year ago or something in Iraq. And the fact that it's coming out now in the mainstream is just basically giving us warning and saying that ISIS, quote unquote, are probably going to use a dirty bomb um, in Europe or the U.S. as some sort of false flag attack, like I talked about earlier, which would give the U.S. and NATO justification to join in on the war once uh, their pawns, being Saudi and Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia and Turkey, kick the whole thing off for them because they don't want to be blamed for this. Um, they need reason to go in, and they don't want to ble be the ones uh, blamed for starting World War III. They want to blame it on Turkey or Syria, or uh, hopefully even. Russia or ISIS, you know, uh, anybody else they're going to lay blame to um, so they don't look like the, the bad guys, you know, later on in history when we look back at history and, you know, um, they've got them to blame rather than themselves. So uh, that is about all I've got right now. I will, like I said, keep you guys updated about this whole um, border crossing or potential border crossing in Iraq by the Northern Thunder Operation, Operational Forces, um, and uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow and in the, the days to come. It should be quite interesting. All right, guys, have a good night. Take care.